Severe weather and flash flood updates for the Eastern Rockies for October 15, 2025. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pew, and today's not as crazy as the last like six days, but we still have a severe weather risk, especially for the Eastern Rockies, where we have a marginal risk or a one out of five. And this stretches all the way down from New Mexico to places like Wyoming and South Dakota. But what this entails is that we only have a 2% chance for an isolated tornado, mostly around the New Mexico-Colorado border. And for the rest of the marginal risk areas, we have a 5% chance to see an isolated risk of winds greater than 60 miles per hour and large hail. So as always, looking at 500 millibars of midway to the troposphere we have this cyclone that came from the pacific northwest traveled to california and is now finally traveling eastward so with this upper level low pressure system creating this trough it's bringing in a lot of vorticity but also a lot of shear and remember that vorticity is spin and shear is tilting those updrafts so essentially both of them combined are helping increase the upward motions but specifically for the severe weather event today the shear is going to be the biggest factor for the updrafts because we're on the border of the rockies so it's going to be a lot of mixing between the boundary layers so if we go down to the surface we're going to have a low pressure that's going to form and deepen or somewhere around Colorado and that's kind of clockwise low and with that we're going to have some southerly winds going into places like New Mexico, Eastern Rockies and into the plains and that's going to do a couple things for us. One it's going to be affecting some warm and moist air into these areas and with some of the winds going directly onto the mountains or adjacent to the mountains we're going to have some orographic lift and that's going to force the winds to go up with the mountain and force upward motion. So for places from New Mexico all the way to Wyoming and South Dakota you can expect isolated cells probably around 2 p.m. mountain time and these isolated storms are pretty much going to be a threat through this afternoon the evening and then as they travel northeastward we're gonna have a lot of rain into places like montana and north dakota throughout the night and as this upper level low pressure continues to move northeastward we're gonna have a lot of showers scattered throughout places like utah eastern colorado idaho wyoming and montana throughout the day i do want to mention by saturday the storm prediction center is confident that there may be a severe weather event from the mississippi valley to the ozark and what's essentially going to happen is this upper level low pressure that we see in the west right now is going to keep traveling to the east but it's still going to deepen all the way to the south and with this deepening, we're going to have a lot of vorticity, but also we're going to still have a lot of shear. And so at the surface, we're probably going to have a low pressure somewhere around the Oklahoma area and a high pressure somewhere around the southeast. And because low pressure is a counterclockwise flow and high pressures are clockwise flow, both of them combined are going to be evacuating a lot of moisture from the Gulf directly into the Mississippi and Ozarks. And so for Saturday, for now, it looks like all hazards are on the table, including high wind, hail, and maybe even tornadoes.